Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, July 5th, and it's a hot one here in southeastern Pennsylvania. We're going to be having hot weather for the uh, next two weeks at least, and it's all, the forecast is the same, going up into the 90s, thunderstorms, over and over and over, uh, so it's going to be some fun. Uh, hope you all had a happy Independence Day, happy 4th of July. For the folks that uh, are in the U.S. and celebrate that, we had a, a good time, laid back, nothing terribly exciting, uh, but uh, you know, enjoyed the day, ate some good food, and uh, just relaxed basically. So, a uh, couple of things. First off, I am finishing up this cigar that I started early this morning. This is an Ashton, uh, what is it, Ashton Handmade, something like that. These are really nice cigars, Ashton, imported handmade Ashton. Uh, it was a Churchill, and this is actually from a box of cigars. A friend of mine that I work with was a cigar smoker, and he said, yeah, I was cleaning up, and I found these two boxes of cigars. Do you want them? And I said, well, you know, I'll, I'll take a look at them. So he brought them into work, and they were sealed. They were still wrapped in the in the cellophane. Um, one was these Ashton Churchills, and then the other one was uh, an Ashton... Uh, it's, it's in the glass tube, tubo. I, I think it's the same. Uh, I don't know much about Ashton cigars, but I think it's the same uh, cigar, just in a different uh, format. And uh, I like having these. I don't often smoke these light, you know, Connecticut wrapper or Dominicans, but on Sunday mornings, I, I like to have a cup of coffee outside when, when the weather permits. And smoke a, a, a light cigar and this is just fantastic he had them for about five years and then I've had them in my humidor for a couple of years and they're just wonderful they uh, they really are perfect for a, for a nice relaxing Sunday morning and I've got some coffee so you might have noticed I look a little different I <laughs> I got fed up so I, the barbers are open, and the barber that I go to is, uh, you know, you have to make appointments on, on their website. And so I go to the website, and I think, okay, I'm going to get a haircut. And the first thing I see is the you know, haircut's $30. Okay, it's a bit more than it was last time, but that's okay. Um, but there's an additional $5 cleaning fee. Well, that's kind of weird. $35 to get a haircut. Um... I needed a haircut, so I went to make the appointment on the website. Well, the earliest appointment available was five days from, uh, I was doing this on Friday. So that kind of annoyed me, but I picked an appointment, and I went to go through the process, and the darn thing would not accept my password. I tried to reset the password. That didn't work. The website was just acting wonky, and I just, in frustration, said, screw it, uh, I have a set of wall clippers that I bought back when I was going through chemo and my hair was falling out, so I, that's, I looked like this back then. Uh, actually, I got balder back then. <laughs> and I just did it, you know, and, and it's great. I'm, I like it. <laughs> it's comfortable. Um, it's, it's cool. Cool temperature-wise. Yeah, it's pretty cool otherwise. Um, the only downside is i got to wear a hat in the sun, but that's okay. I often wear hats when I'm outside anyway, so. Anyway, this is what I'm going to look like from now on. I'm not going to I'm not going to pay a barber to do what I can do at home, and uh, and I like it. My wife's okay with it. I don't really care about anybody else. If you, if you, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. Uh, so, I wanted to do a VR today for uh, our friend uh, Kilted Piper Steve. And if you don't know Kilted Piper Steve great guy. Uh, he was one of the first guests on my uh, Cane Rod Pipes conversation with pipe smokers, him and his wife Kathy. And Steve and Kathy are really good people. And he has reached the 100 sub milestone and he's doing a really nice giveaway. He's giving away a, uh, a Rossi pipe and it's one of these ones that comes in a case and everything. It's a nice pipe. Um, and the 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 giveaway is actually really interesting. Uh, it, it was an interesting idea. So he wants folks to make a VR 
uh, telling a story about either their grandfather or their father, you know, some story that they remember growing up. Um, so I'm going to do that, but I do not want to be entered in the contest, Steve. I've got plenty of uh, plenty of pipes, and I want somebody else to enjoy it. So don't put me into the drawing. I'm just doing this to help you out, you know, promote the channel, because uh, I, I appreciate what you do. You got a, you got a great little channel there. So, story about my father or grandfather. I've told stories about my grandfather quite a bit. You know, he was an important part of my my life growing up. I, I spent a lot of time with him and my grandmother. They lived not very far from us. I mean, we could walk to their house, and my mom didn't drive. So when I was very young, we would, you know, my dad would go to work, and we would walk over to uh, the grandparents' house, and I had breakfast there a lot. Um, as I got older, I went to kindergarten, which there wasn't a kindergarten near my house, but there was one right, like, two blocks away from my grandparents' house. So every morning, my dad would drop me off at their house on, on his way to work, and then I would walk to the kindergarten, and then I would walk back, and I would spend the afternoon, because it was just a half day, spend the afternoon with my grandmother, and then my grandfather would come home from work, and he'd take me home. And then in the summer, they had a house in Wildwood, New Jersey, that I would uh, live with them for the whole summer. So I really spent a lot of time with them, and I've got a lot of stories about my, my grandparents. They were very important. Um, but, of course, my dad, you know, he, he worked very hard. Uh, I, I won't say he wasn't around much, but uh, he, I saw less of him just because he worked so much. And he was often working odd shifts and things like that. Um, and, you know, he, he'd work till uh, I, I don't remember when, but he'd, he'd come home after we had eaten dinner a lot of times. And then he'd be asleep the next day, you know, and, and would get up and go to work. So didn't didn't get to spend as much time with my dad as, as I, I wish I could have back then. But the one, we did do things together, and the one thing that I always remember is that he, we would go to Phillies games together. Now, at the time, my dad worked for a company that had a block of tickets, uh, you know, they'd get a block of season tickets, and they'd give them out, uh, well, they, they'd use them, and a lot of companies do this, you know, if you got a new client and you want to treat them to a, to a, a baseball game, you know, you'd use them for that, but then they'd often have extra tickets, and my dad would get a couple, and we would uh, walk to the stadium, because it was only about maybe 10 blocks from my house, this was Veteran Stadium, this is back in the, uh, I guess early to mid 70s we'd walk there um, I remember we would pass the only Dairy Queen that I had ever seen so <laughs> the Dairy Queens were not that common at the time at least not in the area I lived in and there was this one that we passed during our walk and I knew that we had to get to the game but after the game on the way back we'd always stop there so that was kind of fun and we we go to the stadium, and I can just remember sitting there in the stands with him. Um, you know, I was pretty young. I probably was just at the age where I was starting to recognize baseball players. Oh, darn it, I let my cigar go out. <laughs> I was at the age where I was, I was recognizing the players, um, you know, starting to understand the positions and all that. Not yet really engrossed in the game. But, you know, enough that I enjoyed going and I enjoyed watching it. We always got a hot dog. Um, I think we both had soda. My dad wasn't, it, he's still alive, he, he isn't a, a drinker. Uh, he would, you know, occasionally have a, a beer or something like that. But I think we just had soda and hot dogs. But I can remember watching him and and this is this is the thing that I'm that I really wanted to talk about uh, he was a cigarette smoker and he would sit there and, and at the time you could smoke in the stands and, all that. and you know I'd be watching the game and then I look over and he was just completely engrossed in the game and he would you know light one cigarette off the other he wasn't a chain smoker but during the baseball games he kind of was uh, <laughs> And so he'd finish one and light the next one and just, you know, he'd have his eyes fixed on the field. And if I needed to go to the men's room or something, he, you know, 
broke his concentration and took me in. It was never an issue. But uh, when he was watching the game, it was he was focused on it. And I kind of learned from that that you know there, there was something out there to pay attention to. There was more than just the obvious stuff going on. And that's how I started to get into thinking about strategy. And, uh, yeah, it was it, 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 a, a lot. I learned a lot from those games, not just about baseball, but kind of about life in general. You know, think about, focus on things, think about them, try to understand what might be happening next. Um, and, you know, the, the game would inevitably end, and we occasionally left early because it was the Phillies, and if the, if the Phillies were getting blown out, we'd, we'd leave early. But, but most of the time, we stayed through the ninth inning. And then we'd walk home, and there'd always be this big crowd of people leaving. And, you know, I can, even, even at that young age, uh, that, well, I should have, I was young, but I wasn't so young that you'd see me holding his hand as we walked down the street. Uh, but at, at, because of the crowds, he'd, you know, hold my hand and get me through the crowd. And then the crowd would just kind of disperse as we, as we walked towards home. You know, we were in a big crowd through the parking lot and that and then there were the people that weren't going to continue to walk to public transportation and and by the time we got to the Dairy Queen it was just me and him and uh, we'd get a couple of ice cream cones and walk home and eat them um, it's really I got, I got a lot of good memories of my dad uh, and still I'm making memories with my dad but that those are those are some that when I think about him that's one of the first things that comes to mind is those, those baseball games and I have had a lifelong love of, of baseball, and that's largely thanks to, to those days I spent with him. So anyway, I hope that was of interest to folks, and I hope that fits okay, Steve, with what you were looking for. Uh, I know it was a bit rambly, but I'm a bit of a rambly guy sometimes. So, Steve, congratulations on your 100 subs. It's a fantastic milestone and well-deserved. Uh, guys, I'm going to put a link to Steve's channel down below. If, if you haven't seen him, go, go watch a couple of his videos. They're, they're short, not very short, but, you know, they're you know, around 10, 7 to 10 minutes or so. He always has a great story to tell. He's got a great laid-back personality. He's exactly the kind of guy you want to share a pipe with on a Sunday morning. So go check him out. Link's below. With that, folks, I don't have much in the way of uh, shop updates. Um... I'll probably do a Wednesday ramble. I'm off. Uh, I, I'm not, I took vacation Monday and Tuesday, so I've got some time off. Uh, didn't do any shop work yesterday, largely because there's a big spider that's occupied my my shop. If you follow me on Instagram, I put a picture of him up. This thing is like this this big. I mean, it's really it's one of those big hairy funnel web spiders. Uh, he's been in and out. I, I know I should just stomp them, but I can't. I just, I just uh, things things can live up to like ten years, and uh, I don't know, he's part of the ecosystem here. So I, I'm trying to let him do his thing, and you know, keep other pests away and all that. Uh, I think we've reached a, a state of detente where he's going to stay on his area, and I'm going to stay in mine. Uh, we'll see. But I didn't come down to the shop yesterday because I, <laughs> I was. I was worried about the spider, and it was the 4th of July. Today's Sunday. I am going to probably do some cleaning because I haven't cleaned my lathe in a while, and I just got to get some get caught up on that. And then I'm going to be back to work on Monday, um, as time allows, because the wife and I are probably going to go for a drive or something. So we'll, I'll be taking it easy Monday and Tuesday, doing a little bit of work. And I'll be back to work full-time on Wednesday, uh, full-time for my real job, and you know, as time allows, working on pipes, and I'll do a uh, I'll do a Wednesday ramble for you guys. And see you then. So, hope you all had a great weekend. Fantastic Fourth of July. Uh, wish you all the best in the week ahead. And until I see you next time, I will look forward to talking all again very soon. Goodbye now.